In this tub, we have the Scorpio Maurus Palmatus, the Israeli Gold Scorpion. A gift, courtesy from Steve at Tarantula Tastic Enclosures. Now make sure to go and check out Steve's YouTube channel. There will be a link in the description below, guys, as well as the link to his awesome Facebook group, Exotic Pet Enclosure Designs. Both fantastic places to visit for some awesome design ideas. Welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Did I just... Oh yes. Whoever said... I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. Whoever said keeping stick insects is a woman's role or the most basic of inverts. I've been shredded and cut more times dealing with phasmids and their bramble than I ever have any of the other creepy crawlies in my collection. So bear that in mind. Anyway, that point off topic. I entered a little competition with Adam the Invertebrarian on Steve's channel. I didn't really check back onto the video later on to see whether me or Adam would have won that competition and honestly that's not why I entered, I did it for a laugh. But Steve liked both our entries so much that he gifted us both. So make sure to go onto the Invertebrarian's channel. This video is probably out a few weeks possibly after Adam's recorded his. So make sure to skip back to see what he won because it was a totally different invert to mine. Now we're just gonna to cut to the chase guys and see if we're able to get some nice visuals of the Israeli gold scorpion. I'll do so on Kamora Bee. Now Kamora Bee setup is nothing like the Israeli gold scorpion's habitat. So it's just for filming before we put it in its enclosure. The scorpion is more of a kind of arid desert slash dry forest scrubland sort of area whereas Kamora Bee is more of a mossy forest terrain. But it will be nice to see the scorpion in both habitats, right? So let's take him out, let's get him on the filming area, and let's check out this beauty. So there he is within his tub. I'll just put on my additional light. We'll get him out for you guys. Well, that was a fail. Try that one again. Now, I'm not very fond on handling scorpions. Um, I don't intend on handling this one. Let's just see if we can get it to... Come on to the bit of wood and see, oh, 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 he's speeding up. There he is. Let's see what shots we can get of this guy. So there he is, our Israeli gold scorpion. Now guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, the information I provide you is just bits and bobs that I found on the internet. I have never kept this species. It was a surprise gift, but I am so glad to have one. So I've had friends that have kept these at a slightly smaller size and I've really enjoyed watching them. So to have one in my collection is pretty awesome. Oh, I like the way it's already exploring Kamora Bee. Probably trying to escape the light. Oh, There it is, dwelling within the crack within the wood. What a beautiful specimen this is. I like the little patterning across the pincers that it has, that kind of darkened edge with those slightly darkened stripes. It's almost like boxing gloves with kind of crab claw effect coming off the end. Really, really interesting. And the tail is of a decent size in comparison to the scorpion too. Not as big as the pincers, but uh, still pretty hefty for the size of the scorpion, I would say. Another thing I like about this scorpion is the almost translucent legs it has there. Can you just see? It has that sort of effect to it. Whether it actually is translucent or it's just the way the coloration works, I'm quite unsure. But it's mesmerizing with the dots between the joints too. Segment to segment with a little brown dot. So appearances aside, I actually need to get this scorpion out of this piece of wood to pop him back in the pot ready for his enclosure. Oh, hello. So let's see if I can just prod him out with the tongs there. Come on. What are you doing, dude? 
he does not look too impressed with me. Right. Now he's almost out, I'll get him potted, and then I'll tell you any of the information I actually know regarding this species. Got this one somewhere out of the light, nice and dark and safe for a moment, while I show you the enclosure setup I have done for this species. So in here is almost a two kilo fat. <sighs> so I've got a sort of two-tone effect here so down the bottom I've got kind of a topsoil mixed with sand layer followed by about an inch of sand and I pulled a little bit of dirt up at the top so I'm using my hexagonal style enclosures yet again and I let my daughter give this one a design so I will be adding a shallow water dish but what she's done is put in a bit of a bark hide there a half a tube and then at the back some fake plants. So depending on how this scorpion reacts to the enclosure I may add an additional hiding spot or an additional bit of bark for it to climb on but to do that I will have to find or purchase more. We're running out of stuff here in the realm. So being a surprise gift I wasn't prepared to receive a scorpion but as I said I'm happy I did. So for the rest of this video I'm just going to be telling you information I already know about this scorpion. If some of it is slightly wrong I do apologise. I will be doing my proper research after housing it in here. So I have kind of read their environmental factors um, before I made this enclosure but everything else is kind of just on my usual know-how rather than 100% accurate information. So, are you going to go in, dude? Oh, oh, I did not mean to do that. I'm so sorry. So there he is in the enclosure. I'll wait for him to change position so I can film better and he goes and hides behind the plant. <laughs> right, this is going to be a long recording trying to get different shots. So what I can tell you is they are quite a defensive species. At least the people I know to have kept these, they were very, very food responsive. They went into a defensive stance pretty quickly. Now there's no prey in here, so I'm not quite sure what the scorpion is shuddering at there. Perhaps it can feel the movement of a looser bit of sand, or perhaps it's preparing a place to dig. Now I haven't seen these scorpions use their sting very much and I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that that tends to be the way. Their, their large claws they use mostly. Uh, stings will get used but not as commonly as just the gripping effect from the claws. They'll grip the prey, squeeze the prey and suck out the juices. You'll find these scorpions across the Middle East. Although called the Israeli gold, it's not just Israel you will find these. You'll find them all the way across the Middle Eastern areas in the hot, arid environments. However, these scorpions do okay in that ever so slightly more humid environment than some other desert species, which is why I've left a layer of topsoil at the bottom of the sandy substrate. So if it does choose to burrow down, it can have the cooler, slightly damper area, should it choose to. So guys, I've dimmed one of the lights. But as soon as I started speaking, Scorpion started reacting. I've just been sat here in silence the whole time. It's almost as if you could feel my voice vibrations. I'm not sure whether that's actually true or what but literally I haven't moved and he was just moseying around slowly until I spoke I'm curious about this now I know certain species they can feel the vibrations but I haven't moved at all now there isn't much more I know about this species although they do have I'm pretty sure a small wetter season obviously mostly in the drier seasons though so as I do with all my videos I add the water dish after the recording because I find it often gets in the way now these guys are pretty good burrowers as far as I recall I'll have to double check that as well which is why I've given a pretty deep substrate for a scorpion of this size. I'll update you guys in the future if it does decide to burrow. I think it's calmed now because it's 
grooming a little bit. Which is good because I don't like a stressed animal. I try to not stress them out as much as possible when it comes to filming. But obviously any kind of human interaction or distraction will be stressful in some form or another. But this is how we educate. You know, nobody could have learnt about these amazing animals or be able to keep them if it wasn't for somebody doing some form of documentation, whether in the wild, writing things down and recording, they would have to remove animals from burrows or tickle out tarantulas. Some even dig them out, which I find highly unfair. And we're doing nothing different here on YouTube, guys, except we're keeping them in captivity and filming them the best we can. He's feeling around. Is he gonna? I'm not sure. I think he's hit the corner of the ridge of the enclosure there, and I'm not sure if he's using that as a safety point or if he just was unsure about how to get round it. Every time I raise my voice a little more, he seems to be a bit more disturbed. There must be something. If anybody is more up to date with scorpion knowledge than me, let me know if that really will affect anything, whether it's sound or vibration coming through my voice. Something is bothering him when I speak louder and I would like to understand exactly what it is. So once again I want to give a massive thanks to Steve for this awesome gift and also a thanks to Tony Webb for allowing him to add it in my beetle order as a surprise for me. That was pretty awesome. Now I'm going to try and move this slowly with as little disruption as possible but it seems the scorpion is going to prefer to stay in corners. That's a real shame for the footage for you guys. I'm sorry about that folks. So I shut the camera off guys and give one last try with the waxworm expecting no results but look he is gripping it He's not started eating. I'm not sure if he's unsure about it. He's got the head end there. I'm trying to speak quieter. Is he is he munching? Oh, I can't tell. Don't want to raise my voice and disturb the scorpion again. Nor do I want to spin the enclosure. What are you playing at? There's movement from the mouth parts. Well, he's Bingo. Look at the mouth parts. Scorpion's eating. Oh, as soon as I talk, he stops. There, look at them. It's so alien like, isn't it? It's like an extra pair of claws there to grind it up to be able to suck in the insides. Absolutely fascinating scorpions mouth parts. Caught him in the act again. See that? I spoke and he stopped. Now I've got the camera zoomed in so I'm actually sat a good metre away from this scorpion with my zoom on. So guys, if you want to see what else dwells in the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. Very, very soon, excuse the mess, we are going to sort out Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0 and inside that we will be putting our sun beetle. So I do look forward to that one. All that space, look. All that space I can film. And they want to stick in the corners. That's the joys of inverts for you guys. Being a uh, invertebrate... YouTuber, I like to just show you things as they really are. I could just show you the perfect shots at all times, but you know what? I'd rather make it a bit more personal with you guys and you see things a little bit more raw from time to time and know exactly what it's like trying to get these shots. So again, one last time, massive thanks to Steve. Check out his YouTube channel. Massive thanks to Tony. Check out Venomous Visions for some wonderful inverts. That's going to be it for me. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.